सपोज देर इज अ पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम पेपिलरी कार्सिनोमा और फॉलिकुलर कार्सिनोमा ऑफ थायरॉयड एंड द पेशेंट हैज ऑलरेडी अंडर गॉन टोटल थायरॉयड एक्ट इन दिस सिचुएशन वॉट इज द पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव मैनेजमेंट सो स्टेप वन वुड बी रिस्क स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन वेन वी गेट द डिटेल्ड हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी रिपोर्ट आफ्टर सर्जरी द फर्स्ट थिंग वी हैव टू डू इज द रिस्क स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द फ्यूचर रिस्क ऑफ रिकरेंस ऑफ डिजीज एंड फर्दर मैनेजमेंट डिसीजन्स दे डिपेंड ऑन दिस कैटेगराइजेशन फॉर थायरॉयड कैंसर द कैटेगराइजेशन इज डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री कैटेगरीज लो रिस्क इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क एंड हाई रिस्क नाउ योर डॉक्टर विल डू दिस बेस्ड ऑन योर हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी रिपोर्ट और द बायोप्सी रिपोर्ट इन वेरी सिंप्लीफाइड वर्जन फॉर लो रिस्क द क्राइटेरिया आर क्लासिक पेपिलरी कार्सिनोमा नो लोकल और डिस्टेंट मेटास्टेसिस दैट इज द डिजीज हैज नॉट स्प्रेड टू एनी अदर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी कंप्लीट सर्जिकल रिसेक्शन सो इट शुड द डिजीज वुड है शुड हैव बीन कंप्लीटली रिमूव देर आर सर्टन कंडीशन वेन द डिजीज क्लियरेंस कैनॉट बी डन कंप्लीटली फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन द डिजीज इज एंटरिंग इन टू द इंटरनल कैरोटेड आर्टरी सो समाइम्स अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ टिश्यू कैन बी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड नो एक्स्ट्रा थायरॉयड एक्सटेंशन सो वेन द डिजीज इज लिमिटेड टू द थायरॉयड ग्लैंड सो दिस इज अ लो रिस्क कैटेगरी नो वस्कुलर इन्वेजन दैट द डिजीज हैज नॉट एंटर्ड इन टू द ब्लड वेसल्स लो पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव थायरोग्लोबुलिन लेवल सो थायरोग्लोबुलिन is a chemical produced by the thyroid gland and it is used as a tumor marker so if it is low post operative it means that the residue there is no residual tissue now no radio iodine uptake if it is done post operatively we'll come to that later intermediate risks are microscopic extra thyroid extension that there is an extension outside the thyroid gland but it is microscopic not gross then cervical lymph node metastasis the disease has entered or reached the lymph nodes in the neck vascular invasion the disease has entered the blood vessels or aggressive histology so there are certain varieties of thyroid cancer so any aggressive form of uh, thyroid cancer for high risk the criteria are macroscopic gross extra thyroid extension that there is an overt involvement of tissues outside the thyroid gland distant metastasis the disease has spread to other areas of the body incomplete surgical excision or high thyroglobulin levels after the surgery so now these this is a very simplified version your doctor will do this stratification based on certain guidelines like the ajcc or the ata guidelines which are updated as per the latest research step 2 is tsh stimulation after risk stratification we don't have to start the thyroid hormone tablet immediately after total thyroidectomy in benign cases we have to start the thyroid hormone tablet immediately but not in thyroid cancer cases so this is the important point we have to wait around 3 to 4 weeks to stimulate the tsh stimulated tsh means that since we have removed the thyroid gland and the thyroid hormone is not being produced so this feedback loop will lead to an increase tsh levels from the pituitary the purpose of stimulated or high tsh is that when we are giving radioactive iodine application in the next step elevated tsh will help in the uptake of radioactive iodine in any remaining thyroid cancer so this is why we need a high tsh level when the tsh levels are more than 30 or 35 that is called a stimulated tsh and then we proceed to the next step but if at the end of 3 to 4 weeks the tsh is still less than 30 then we can wait for another one week to stimulate the tsh sufficiently step 3 is radioactive iodine scan and ablation radioactive iodine scan will tell us if there is any remnant thyroid tissue which is left after surgery this can be destroyed by ablation in the same setting so sometimes we do a post radiation scan also to check the adequacy of tumor ablation for low risk cases ablation is not routinely recommended if done 30 millicuries is the dose which is generally preferred for high risk cases around 150 millicuries is generally recommended step 4 tsh suppression after ablation is done the third step is the suppression of tsh now we don't need a very high tsh 
if the TSH is high, it will stimulate the growth of any remnant thyroid tissue that can cause recurrence of the thyroid cancer. So at this stage, after the ablation is done, we need to suppress the TSH. This is called TSH suppression. How it is achieved? It is achieved by giving high doses of thyroid hormone. The level of suppression depends on risk stratification. For low risk cases, if non-stimulated thyroglobulin is less than 0.2, TSH should be maintained around 0.5 to 2. If thyroglobulin is more than 0.2, then TSH target is 0.1 to 0.5. For high risk cases, the TSH suppression is lifelong and the target TSH value is less than 0.1. To achieve this level of TSH suppression, a high dose thyroxin therapy is needed. So general basic guidelines to start the uh, thyroid uh, dosages in low risk cases it is around 1.9 micrograms per kg in intermediate risk 2.2 micrograms per kg and for high risk 2.6 micrograms per kg. However we have to be cautious not to cause an overt hyperthyroidism because it can have an impact on the cardiovascular and other organs of the body. So we have to maintain a risk benefit ratio. This dose which is recommended is a general guide and only an initial dose but in real practice the dose needs to be changed on a regular basis to maintain the target TSH value and to avoid any hyperthyroidism. Step 5 is long term follow up. Coming to the long term follow up there are certain tests which we will do to monitor the disease over a long period of time. So number one test is serum thyroglobulin and anti-thyroglobulin -thy levels anti-TG. The target for thyroglobulin in unstimulated is less than 0.2 and in stimulated thyroglobulin less than 1. At the same time, we should also check the thyroglobulin antibodies. If anti-TG anti antibodies are raised, then this may lead to a falsely low thyroglobulin level. So generally we advise both the tests at the same setting, TG and anti-TG. After 3 years of surgery and radioiodine ablation, the thyroglobulin antibodies usually disappear. Reducing level of thyroglobulin antibodies over time is a good prognosticator factor. Number two test is radioactive iodine scan. So in high risk cases, annual radioactive scan can be done. But in low risk cases, we can initially use markers like thyroglobulin. So if they are elevated, then we can go for a radioiodine scan. If the scan shows any problem, then we obviously we go for the ablation. Number three, ultrasound neck. It should be done every three to six months to check for any recurrence in the thyroid bed or in the surrounding lymph nodes. Number four, thyroid profile should be done every three to six months to guide the TSS suppression and to prevent any hyperthyroidism. In general, the frequency of these tests is higher in high risk cases and lower in low risk cases. As a patient, you can leave all this management to your surgeon. He or she will take care of these technical things. You just have to be very strict with your tests and follow up. As a doctor, please go through the ATT guidelines, which give us a very detailed uh, uh, recommendations regarding this very important disease.